In addition to my collection of Commodore tape recorders, I also have a small but growing collection of vintage audio recorders. A couple of these have been seen on the channel before because they're related to Commodore drives. This GE model here is the same one used in John Carpenter's movie The Thing. This AWAS from 1967, this is one of my favorites. Right now I'm working on restoring this uh, 1970 Sony TC120. Originally I wasn't going to make a video about it, but it's got an interesting design. Uh, so I thought I'd record a few things and just uh, see if I get anything interesting enough to make a video out of. As you can see, it's already been disassembled and cleaned. Uh, it's been on the bench a few days waiting on new belts. Surprisingly, the old belts were still intact. They're just uh, dry and stretched out. So I'm going to go through the reassembly process here and uh, maybe point out a few th interesting things about the design. I've never seen a transport design quite like this. It's got two flywheels, which alone is interesting. These wheels here on both sides are for fast forward and rewind. So fast forward pushes them in this direction. And with the flywheel in place, this wheel mates with this surface on the flywheel and then on the, uh, the reel, if this is take up or the, this is the take up reel, yeah. So this is fast forward. So pressing fast forward, engages this against the flywheel and drives the take-up wheel. Rewind just moves the wheel in the opposite direction over here. And the odd thing is this is the playback take-up wheel. So these flywheels both drive fast forward and rewind. And of course the cap stand spins the tape during playback, but this pulley here drives the take up wheel during playback. Normally the, uh, the take up reel has a clutch on it to prevent over torquing the take up. But in this case, the take up reel doesn't have a clutch on it. This pulley has a clutch on it. I've got some new belts here from turntablenedles.com. I've been buying belts from them for a while and uh, never had any complaints. So the drive belt new drive belt on. I've already cleaned the pulleys. The belt path is interesting. The motor's mounted sideways, so there's a twist in the belt here. It just goes past one corner on this flywheel and goes around the capstan wheel. And then for playback, we have this belt here. Okay, the belts have been replaced. I just have to reassemble. Got to reattach this switch here. Quite a few wires I need to reattach. I always take pictures of the wires first before I disconnect them. And mechanical things like the pulleys and the belt path, whenever you're removing stuff, if it looks complex, just take a picture of it first so you know where to put it back. Oh, of course, duh. You need to put the uh, Capstan retainer back on. Capstan retainer has, this is an adjustable one with screws. Usually they just bend, but these have a uh, slippery plastic on the bottom that write on these, uh, on the bottom of these. So these things just spin on that little nub on the bottom of the flywheel. A little bit of play there, nothing excessive. A 
wire paths look okay. And this, <clears throat> putting this in here, see if I can see this on camera. The record switch, record play switch is right here. And this has to mate into the gap here between these two pieces. Gotta look at it, make sure that goes in there, right? Looks okay. You just have to put it all back together, put the screws in and test it out. Hopefully I didn't screw up the belt path. These are the wire, power wires that go to the battery compartment. And the speaker wire. But we'll just go ahead and test that the transport works. Plug in the power cord. Cap stand and take up wheel are running. Plug in an external speaker here and put in a tape. One of the other interesting features about this one is the reel brakes. I don't know if you can see them right here and here, but they're springing down onto the take up and supply reels, holding them in place. If you press play, you'll see them lift out of the way. We'll fast forward or rewind also. But when it's stopped, these things are held in place so they won't rotate. One other interesting thing is, I'm not sure what the design reason for this is, but when you, uh, you press play on a tape, watch these little arms right here. They come out and press down on the cassette. The eject button won't work when it's in play mode anyway, so these aren't holding it in place. They're just keeping it pressed down. This, uh, this device right here is a end of tape alarm. It doesn't have auto stop, but uh, supposedly it has an end of tape alarm, which requires the tape leader to have a foil, conductive foil on it. So this is pretty much useless with most tapes, unless it has that conductive foil on it. And then it just beeps at you when you're at the end of the tape. The eject mechanism's kind of interesting too. Pushes up. I haven't seen this kind of eject before. It's time to put the tape counter back on. Tape counter belt goes around the supply reel.
I need to reattach the meter. This is a battery meter on playback and a record level meter on record. That seems to be working. Of course, the battery's okay because it's plugged into AC power. Need to reattach the condenser mic to the top half of the shell here now. It goes right here. Okay, this should be interesting. I'm going to try to uh, put this thing back together here. I need to reattach the speaker wire before I put the transport assembly back down in here. So let's move this stuff to the side and get this over here. It's still rolling. Here goes nothing. Okay, I think I remember where most of the screws go. This one goes right here. One of these black ones. Goes right here. So far, so good. I reattach the condenser mic, which goes back here and the front panel. I need to try something here. I don't know if it's going to work. The original had this really nasty black foam tape all over the place that was holding things together, holding wires down and holding pieces together. And it was labeled in the service manual as uh, a vibration absorber. And one of the things it was holding in was this meter. Uh, the foam was just disintegrated with age, so I'm going to try using this white foam weather stripping to replace that. See if I can't get it to stick down there. Okay, here goes nothing. I've got some of this foam weather stripping cut to the right shape, and then I put some 3M foam adhesive backing on that. So hopefully this will stick to the meter. And this will stick to the frame with enough thickness that it sits flush. It needs to move over just slightly. Looks good.
There, the front face plate's attached. I've got all the wires reattached and the, uh, the original had this black foam in places called a vibration absorber. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this stuff down in places where it was before and where the service manual calls for it. Got the battery compartment reattached. Before screwing it down, go ahead and flip it over and test it out. Have the original Sony badge here. But I still need to glue back down. I was waiting till it was all back together. Eject. Meter looks okay. Counter reset. Playback. I must have screwed up the connection on the internal speaker. That's a bummer. Well, the speaker problem ended up being this switch right here. This switch disconnects the speaker during record mode, so you don't get feedback. And this leaf was on the wrong side of that tab. Tedious. I have to put it all back together again. Okay, it's finally all put back together. So, so tape it and test it. See if it even works. Tape counter's moving. Volume, tone, fast forward, rewind, eject. Testing, testing, one, two, three. This is a test. Tap on the microphone. Blow in the microphone. So the meter in playback Shows the battery indicator. And in record mode, should show the record level, but it might need to be recalibrated. There's an adjustment inside. Let's try it with the original microphone. That's plugged in. And we'll switch it on. And hello, testing, testing, one, two, three. The meter's moving. This is a test, A, B, C, D, E, F, G.
Testing, testing, one, two, three. The meter's moving. This is the test, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I switched cameras here so I can do a speed test. Uh, I use an app on my phone to do it. Even though there isn't anything I can do to correct the speed if there's a problem, the motor speed isn't adjustable on this thing, which is typical for the period. The TC120 service manual here doesn't have any procedure for speed adjustments. But I've got this calibrated test tape from duplication.ca in Canada. It has two different test tones on it and this spectrum analyzer app. It's not too far off. You might have been able to hear quite a bit of flutter in there also. The Sony TC120 came with a few accessories. There was a leather carrying case. This one is uh, kind of coming apart. It's pretty old. Actually, it's 50 years old. 1970 to 2020. A accessory pouch here for the remote control, which is nothing more than a switch that turns the motor on and off. So you can pause it during playback from a distance. Microphone, which also has the same remote control switch on it. AC power cord. The power input is, a, is odd. It's got four pins in it. There's 117 volts AC or 6 volts DC and there's a notch here and a key on the plug so it goes in the right way. You can't really see it from here but inside this notch is a leaf switch and when you plug the power cord in it breaks the contact which I believe disconnects the battery compartment. On the front you have the carry handle, tone and volume controls, battery meter, record level meter. The carry handle has notch detents in it so it locks into the extended position or it locks into the folded under position to angle the whole thing up. On the right side you've got the standard inputs, mic, remote, aux, and monitor. Aux I believe is a line input and monitor is a headphone level output. The microphone has the mic connection and remote connection on it. And if you're not recording and you're just playing, you can plug in this remote. It has a switch on it for you to pause or resume playback. Standard transport controls, rewind, stop, play, fast forward, record. The eject button first releases the spring-loaded top cover and then pushes the tape up with this mechanism here. There's a resettable tape counter and a built-in condenser mic. On the bottom, there's a battery compartment that takes four C-size batteries. This one had some pretty major corrosion damage to the positive side of these terminals. I had to get the Dremel out and uh, wire wheel and grind those down. Next on the bench, I'll be working on this Sony TC40 recorder. It's a one-handed mono dictation recorder. I've got new belts on order. That's it for now. I'll leave you with some shots of the TC120 playing Anders Enger Jensen's Retro Grooves 4 mixed with the rain outside. Thanks for watching.